honestly, Lisa, I feel really good about who's on the field and I feel really good about the next one, the next five or six that are ready to go too. And, and so I just think we're really deep. And I think that, um, more than anything, I think what we've shown in the first couple of weeks, not that I'm surprised by it, but I love it is, uh, just the fight that they have. I think this team has more fight than, than any team that, that we've had here. Um, and so I, I just think that they never count themselves out. I would never count them out myself. Thanks coach. Yep. Dorian. Hi coach. Um, I'm going to be on the call on, uh, for the double header on Friday. Um, so I would like to ask you a little bit about, about Braxton, uh, obviously getting some national recognition today, uh, had huge numbers in the Razorback Invitational. I mean, what is it in your mind that has made her so productive? I know she had good numbers last year, but these numbers are just insane. And then what have you seen from her approach in her at bat so far this year? Well, she's just really good. <laughs> she's just, I'm sorry. She's just a really, really good, really talented softball player. And, um, the numbers, um, she's putting up there right now are no surprise to us because she does it every day. Um, you know, in the fall, we were limited to only playing, you know, against ourselves and she won our whole competition. And, and to be honest, she had her back against the wall and in the last day, she knew exactly what she had to do and she did it. Um, she's one of the most competitive people I've ever had the privilege of watching. Um, she's meticulous with her training, um, and she never takes a pitch off. And I think that that's something that you, um, you can see really easily with her when you're watching is when, when she's in the box, everything she's taking information and in. she never takes a pitch off and she's learning and she knows exactly what she wants to do. And the thing that's remarkable about Brax is like, she can hit any pitch, um, and I know that she, um, deserve, deservedly so, she had a lot of um, attention on, on Twitter the last couple of days for hitting that home run 299 feet. She hit that on a changeup. And to be able to generate that amount of power um, off of a changeup um, is incredible. Um, so she's just really dialed. Um, she has a plan that works for her. And, and, and honestly, she's just so competitive. She never takes a pitch off and she's always learning and always getting better. And um, the thing with her too, is she takes everyone with her. Um, so not only does you see her, you know, perform at a high level, but she raises the bar for everyone around her. Um, and she's just an incredible athlete. You talked about the, the competition in the fall. What was the whole competition that she won? Well, we called it Razorbacks Unlimited. Um, so through kind of COVID when everything was shut down, the pro league, um, the softball professionally kind of made a fun twist on on the pro league and did athletes unlimited to where there was a point system um, for playing so every kind of aspect of the game there were points attached to that so um, at, you know theirs were really offensively inflated so Matt our my assistant who's a numbers guru kind of adjusted the numbers to kind of better reflect what we wanted to focus on but every part of the game had a point system like you could gain points you can lose points um i forget exactly what the point total was but uh, for instance every out that a pitcher creates they get three points um if they give up an earned run it's negative 10 points um uh you know things like that so um you know a home run had 14 points a, a triple would have well, I'm just making these up. But, um, I get the idea. Yeah. There's just a point system attached to every part of the game. And so, and it was a running total. So each week, the top four point getters would be our captains for the next week. And they would choose your teams and they would coach them. They would create the lineups. They would create kind of the strategy, the game plan. Um, and then they'd, they'd compete for a double header. And then the top four point getters would be our captains again for the next one. So we did four double headers throughout the fall. And I, I want to say on the last day, Braxton was, I think she was in second. Um, and it's, to be honest, it's harder for a hitter to win it because it's a pitching game when it, when it's all said and done, it's a pitcher's game. And, um, and she, I think, I mean, she had to go off offensively and I, and she did <laughs> and like, um, it was just incredible. It kind of came down, I think at the end of the four double headers, it came down to one or two points and she just edged out our freshman pitcher utility alley light. 
um, but it was an incredible competition. Um, it was just really fun to watch and to just see her compete when um, her back was against the wall and thrive in that situation. That's exactly what who Brax is and what she does. I appreciate it. Just one more for you, because uh, I don't want to hog all the time. But um, Danielle talked a lot about how deep the lineup is one through nine in terms of hitting and the pressure that that puts on an opposing pitcher because they can't spot pitch around Braxton because you've got Danielle and um, you know, you've got uh, Hannah in there and just um, can you kind of talk about how deep your lineup is and, and you kind of hit on that with Alyssa, but just, you know, the versatility that that gives you. Yeah, this is hands down the strongest lineup that we've that we've had here. Um, we're really strong one through nine, but we're really strong one through 13. Um, you know, when you look at what we did this past week, we didn't even have Ryan Jackson in the lineup, um, who's one of our biggest power hitters. So um, you're taking out one of our best hitters. Um, and and when you're looking at the lineup and what they were able to generate, and then you're like, well, shoot, we didn't even have Ryan in there. Um, it's, it's pretty exciting. So um, yeah, it puts a ton of pressure. Um, you know, I was talking to a, one of my friends as a pitching coach of one of the opposing teams this weekend, and she was talking to her pitchers and they're just like, well, gosh, I was just like intimidated. <laughs> which is great. You know, like, I don't know if she should tell me that, but she's just like, you know, that they're just intimidating. They just have this confidence about them and there is no let up in our lineup. And when you have to be on your game for everybody that steps in the box, it creates a ton of pressure on pitchers and defense defenses. And, um, and, and there really is no, there's no light spot in, in our lineup. And we really have the ability to put another four or five in there and, and create that same, same impact. So um, I really love how we're swinging it right now. Um, you know, when, when you put pressure on pitchers, they make mistakes. And I think the best thing about our offense right now is they're capitali capitalizing on that. They're hitting good pitches. They're hitting pitchers, miss pitchers, misses, and they're hitting, um, you know, pretty much anything they're swinging at right now. Cause they're swinging with pretty good intent. I would say so. Thank you, coach. Mm -hmm. Megan. Hey, Courtney. Um, I want to kind of flip this and talk about your pitching staff a little bit, because I don't I don't think with the offensive numbers that they've gotten the credit that they deserve. Uh, and before I ask you about Autumn, I'm going to ask you about Mary and kind of her biggest difference between her 19 season versus going into 20. And then now what has been the biggest focus with you guys in the bullpen and what have you seen improvement wise over the last year? Well, she's just kind of getting, I mean, she's healthier than she's ever been. So coming off kind of the, the knee thing in, in the 19 stretch, I think, you know, she tweaked it early in the SEC season and then tore it going into the postseason, her ACL. And, um, you know, this break was good for her because it allowed her to get healthy and really strengthen that leg and just kind of fine tune her craft um, and her mentality associated with that. So I think she's stronger than she's ever been physically and mentally. Um, I think when you go through that stretch, whether it's um, your performance is hindered by your physical health or whatever the case may be, whatever the, this game throws at you, when you work your way through that, you become stronger on the other side and she's stronger on the other side. So um, she just has a really great approach. Um, she's fine tuned her craft to know exactly um, what she wants to do and, and just kind of getting back to what makes her so good. And it's just trusting her spins and trusting her pitches and um, and just setting a really good tone for us uh, as a pitching staff and for our defense. Her rise ball really does seem to be a little bit tighter this year. Is that something that you guys have worked spin wise with her? Is she using more legs or is it just kind of come with the time in the knee? Um, a little bit of both. Um, she actually, um, gosh, I don't know how to, she just, uh, the best way of saying it, I guess. She just kind of like got back to her mechanics. Um, I think she was just kind of getting out outside herself, which was throwing off her timing. And so just kind of getting back to her start and what puts her in, a, in the best position to really make that rise ball jump. Um, so just getting mostly, I guess, in her mechanic or in her structure. Um, I don't want to bore you guys with pitching mechanics. I but when she gets so her body in the right position, when she loads and, and when she's 
shifting her weight at the right time, it, her rise ball really jumps. And so it's just getting back to that timing piece and understanding where her body needs to be. So with Mary taking the, the bulk of the innings, it I know Autumn, her whole career has kind of been, I don't want to say injury plagued, but at least dealt with injuries almost every season. But what is her update? What does her role look like for this year in your mind? Well, Autumn really just, um, she really just had injury one year. Um, you know, her freshman year was outstanding for us. She had to deal with some injury a little bit her sophomore year. And really the injury was mostly not having the off season. Um, she had a surgery and, and, and then right when she was coming back, um, I don't know, I think she like broke a bone in her hand or something to where, you know, she really was cleared to start pitching again when we started playing. So, um, and then her junior year was her all American year. And then, um, right now she's coming back. I think the thing with autumn, she's going to be stronger each weekend out. Um, we're being really conservative with it because we're, um, here for the marathon and not the sprint. Um, but she's feeling really strong. Um, I think what we saw this weekend is that she has her stuff. She has her good stuff. She has her velocity. Um, we have to kind of work on the discipline a little bit, that that's something that makes her so good, but, um, she feels good. And I think she's going to continue to feel better each weekend. And it's going to be huge to have both her and Mary healthy. Yeah, and with the addition of, you know, Allie Light getting some innings, I know she's only had, what, five or six, and then Lauren in there. What do you see those two adding? And even, you know, Lauren Grace, when she does get in there, what do you see those two or three adding to the pitching staff with Mary and Autumn? Well, they add a different look when you, um, obviously, Mary and Autumn complement each other really well, and then you throw Jenna Bloom in that mix, and she does something completely different than those two, and um, and then you throw, you know, when you look at Allie Light, who does something really different. So, and then um, Lauren Howell, they all have um, different pitches, different speeds, different looks. And so they just complement each other really well. And so we have the ability to kind of look at matchups. We have um, the ability, if there's something an offense struggles with, we have the ability to expose that um, with one of our, with one of our pitchers. So um, I'm just really excited for the depth that we have in our staff. Uh, I'm just going to ask you about two more. Keely Huffine has been someone who has continued to surprise me each year, not in a fact that she's not athletic, but the movements that she makes can sometimes seem a little unorthodox, but she, uh, the last two seasons has really done well and provided a spark offensively and defensively for you guys. Can you touch a little bit more on Keely and what she's done for the program? Yeah, she's one of the most all around athletes, one of the best all around athletes that we've had here. Um, incredible, incredibly competitive, incredibly confident, um, and just the all around team player too. She'll do, I mean, if you look back to what Keely's done here, I think she's played four or five different positions for us. Um, and she, she does such a great job. She's one of the, the best kids I've ever had the privilege of coaching and just a really, really hard worker. Um, when she moved out to the outfield this year, I think she kind of just saw that opening there and, and grabbed it. Um, and we couldn't drag her off the field. If we had hitting groups, she was here. Um, there were times that she's, I mean, there were days she was here on her own <laughs> for hours, um, just taking rep after rep after rep because she wants to play and she wants to do whatever it takes um, for the team to do better. And she's just one of the best, the best teammates I've, I've ever encountered. And um, she knows who she is as a hitter and she knows what she brings to the team offensively and defensively. And, and she makes a huge impact with who she is. Um, she is playing a, an incredible center field for us right now. And she's been hugely productive offensively. Just looking at the, the game the other night, she had grinded um, two walks that were the difference maker of the game. You know, she walked to bring in Hannah Gamble and bases loaded walk. And then she walked with two outs for, for Hannah McEwen to hit a double with and score her. So um, she's finding ways to get on base. Um, she's swinging with some power. I think she has four home runs on the year. Um, so I, I just, I can't say enough about Keely Huffine. I, I, um, she is, um, she's just a tremendous, tremendous person and athlete for us. All right, last one I promise. 
Um, Hannah Gamble is somebody who came in and she was, you know, highly recruited. You guys obviously recruited her for a reason and she's putting up the numbers right now. Uh, and she has strength on both sides of the plate. But what about her coming in as a freshman and her presence adds to this lineup that you say is so deep one through 13 and possibly even one through 14, 15, depending on who you have. I'm sorry. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> what does she add to I, the lineup? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Hannah, I think you just look at her and you're just like, man, she's just a strong physical athlete. Um, and she doesn't get cheated offensively. And the thing that's um, I won't say it surprises me, but it has been really pleasant to see early um, is just the maturity she has within her at-bats. Um, she's obviously incredibly strong, but um, I see her process and I really like it. I, I, she's learning a ton from at-bat to at-bat. She's making great adjustments. Um, she's making great adjustments within at-bats. Um, gosh, there was an, an at-bat, I think, North Dakota State on Thursday night and she was battling. And then she, I think she ended up hitting a change up out on the berm. And I was like, man, that was one of the best sequences that, um, that pitcher pitched. And she, I mean, Hannah just, I mean, she just put it out on the berm. It's just like, man, that's, those are great pitches. Um, and Hannah, that's what I tell our pitchers all the time. It's like, you're so worried about being perfect and you're going to throw a great pitch. It's going to end up on the berm, but and that's what Hannah did to her, but she just has this maturity offensively um, that I really like seeing. And I think she's playing a mean third base, she plays a fearless third base, which you have to be, you have to be a little crazy, right, Megan, to play third base. Um, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but she's playing a great third base for us and um, just has a lot of poise there for that position, um, understanding the clock, understanding the time and the pace of the game. Um, and, and just playing it very maturely. So, um, I'm really excited for where she is. There's going to be, you know, some ups and downs, and we're going to have to get her through some of those downs that are going to come. Um, and I think that's the, the thing that we're going to have to work on the most, but when it comes to working, um, Hannah's just, I mean, she's always at the field. She wants to have reps on reps on reps. She's a hard worker. Um, she studies video. Um, I think that's another thing that what really impressed me um, in our second tournament is the other team was making a pitching change and she immediately saw the number and she was just like, okay, rise and screw. And I was just like, okay, good for you. Like she'd been setting the video. Um, the girl didn't even take a step out of the dugout and she knew exactly what she was going to be seeing. Um, so I just like that she's a student of the game. Um, I like that she's a worker, um, and obviously I like her production, <laughs> but she's pretty fun to work with. Great. Thanks, Courtney. Mm -hmm. All right. Last call for questions for Coach Dyfu. All right. That'll wrap us up. Thanks, Coach Thank Dyfu. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Thanks.